Hello family, this is Refueling Your Faith, and today we are in Zephaniah and Haggai. As you know, we've been walking through the Minor Prophets, and Zephaniah is not like any is any different, is not any different from many of the other prophets that we have looked at throughout the last couple of weeks. God is speaking through Zephaniah and he's telling the people of Israel they're still they have not had they have not been exiled yet into Babylon. So again we get to see how he warns the people to correct their behavior or to at least let them know that there will be judgment for their behavior and then walks through, you know, they will receive judgment and then he will also bring judgment on other people. If you do not get from the many books that we have walked through in the past couple of weeks, um, really since we began, we always want to uphold God as a God of love. And he is a God of love. But if you have not gathered that God is also a God of judgment, a God who will discipline us, because at the end of the day, his ultimate goal is our righteousness. And I've said this before, but we need to hear it again. His ultimate goal is our righteousness. His ultimate goal is that we would actually be living up to the reason why he created us to be his representatives in this world, to be, um, to mirror his character in this world. And he will do what it takes to get us there. And in Zephaniah, as in many of the other prophets, we see that he's going to correct Israel's behavior and he's going to do it by bringing in an oppressive nation to make desolate the land, the land of milk and honey that they were brought to. He will make that land desolate because they have been disobedient. But as we also see, he will return them to their land and restore them when they repent and begin to follow after him. I am so again, excited about, and it's not our highlighted verse, but I did want to bring it to our attention. Zephaniah 2, 1 through 3, he keeps telling them, won't you gather together and repent that the day of the Lord, which is meaning the day of the Lord when he was going to bring about the uh, punishment or the judgment that he was bringing to them, <clears throat> that day is coming. But guess what? You have the opportunity to stop that by repenting and coming back to the Lord, changing your behavior. In Zephaniah 2, 1 through 3, that's what we see. And so again, as lo along with the reminder that God is a God of judgment, God is a patient God. And he wants us to be in right relationship with him through righteousness, not through just our language, <clears throat> but also through our behavior. And so just be reminded of that. Um, Second Peter 3 and 9, he is not slow as some of us think he is, but he's patient with us so that not wishing that any of us would perish, but that we would come to repentance. Come to repentance and your relationship with God will be back the way that it needs to be. God has never left us. We leave him. And so my charge to you, even through Zephaniah, is to remind you that God is a God of judgment. But listen, God is a God of patience. And so uh, repent and you will receive. Um, he will not run from you in your repentance. Um, so Haggai is actually, uh, Haggai is a prophet speaking to Zerubbabel, uh, the leader of rebuilding the temple upon their return from exile. So we, uh, Zephaniah is talking about, well, they have not yet been exiled or received the judgment of God bringing the nation of Babylon into their uh, midst. But it's afterwards, after they've been in exile for over 70 years and have to have returned. We remember that in Zechariah, I'm not Zechariah, but Ezra, uh, we read about that when they returned and they were going to rebuild the temple. And so Haggai is a prophet that spoke to Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel who was actually in that land. And they, God is disappointed with the people because once they came and God delivered them from that exile, they began to build their own land, their own homes, and the temple was not yet built. And we know from Ezra that there were many disruptions and people did not want them to build the temple, but yet they succumb to that um, distraction and begin to build their own homes. It wouldn't be a 
the temple. And so Haggai is just speaking to them about, hey, build this temple that we have. And so um, I really, that's our highlighted verse. Um, our highlighted verse is in this book today. And so Haggai, Haggai chapter one, we're going to read verses three through nine. Haggai chapter one, verses three through nine. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet saying, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled homes while this house lies desolate? He's talking about the temple. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, but harvest little. You eat, but there is not enough to be satisfied. You drink, but there is not enough to become drunk. You put on clothing, but no one is warm enough. And he who earns, earns wages to put into a purse with holes. My God, verse seven, thus says the Lord of God, the Lord God of the host, consider your ways, go up to the mountains, bring wood and rebuild the temple that I may be pleased and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, but behold, it comes to little. When you bring it home, I blow it away. Why? declares the Lord of hosts, because of my house, which lies desolate, while each of you runs to his own house. You look for much, verse nine, but behold, it comes to little. When you bring it home, I blow it away. Why, declares the Lord of hosts, because of my house, which lies desolate, while each of you runs to his own house. Now, many preachers use that as bringing tithes into the storehouse to build up uh, the church, and I'm not arguing with that application, but today I just want to bring it out much broader to that than that. Now, of course, in this scripture, uh, Haggai is talking about the temple. They're not building the temple, and therefore God is not pleased. So everything that they're pouring into their land, pouring into their clothes, they're just never satisfied. It never quenches their thirst because they're not prioritizing the things of God. And in this particular passage, it's the temple. And so uh, in application of that verse, even to us today, now indeed that could be uh, our tithe and we're not giving our tithe to the church um, so that they can, uh, so we can be, you know, use our monies to advance the kingdom of God. And therefore we may not be experiencing much because the where we're sowing is not where we're supposed to be sowing and we're not prioritizing the things of God. But even beyond that, we may not be, prioritizing the call that God has placed on our life. We may not be prioritizing the time that we're spending with God. We may not be prioritizing the relationships that God has given us. And because we're not prioritizing the things that God has given us, the way that God has desired for us to prioritize them, we are unsatisfied with the things in our lives. And so um, for some of us, that is the issue. We're not prioritizing time. We're not taking time to spend with God to even the, in the beginning of the day to spend time with him, to hear his voice. And therefore we feel our time is always running away from us. I know when I don't do my devotion, that's exactly the way that I feel. When I don't get up at the time that I've assigned for myself to spend personal time with him, I feel like my time it just runs away. And if I just prioritize getting up, I feel so much more productive during the day. Can you testify to that? I know when I prioritize my finances, when I give God whatever offering God has called me to give, the 10% or over and above that, whatever, then I feel as though my money is not extending the way that it could extend. And so when we prioritize the things of God, when we give him the time, when we be when we are good stewards and recognize that everything that we have, relationships, times, talents, treasures, whatever, uh, when they belong to God and then we prioritize the things of God, God will ensure that we are satisfied, that uh, we are productive. I love in verse six, you have sown much, but harvest little. You eat but there is not enough to be satisfied. You drink, but there is not enough to become drunk. You put on clothes, but no one is warm enough. And he who earns, earns wages to put into a purse with holes. Why it says in verse nine, I love it. Because of my house, which lies desolate, while each of you runs to his own house. You prioritize your own desires. You prioritize your own 
feelings and things that you think you ought to do, and yet you still keep coming up empty. My challenge for you today is to prioritize the things of God and watch how things will shift. If you're feeling that way, that may be the issue that you are not prioritizing the things of God. And listen, it's more than just lip service. I'm so into that right now. You say a lot of things with your mouth. God is the head of my life. But when we evaluate our time, when we evaluate the things that we are involved in, if we be truthful, if we be sober-minded about ourselves, we can say that truly is not the truth. He is not the head of the life, my life. I am the head of my life when I really evaluate my activities. But my challenge for you today is that indeed your activities demonstrate, your activities demonstrate, not your language, your activities demonstrate that you are prioritizing the things of God. And if that is the issue, I guarantee that you will see more satisfaction in your life. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. I will see you next week. We will be in Zechariah and and Malachi. We'll be ending out the Old Testament. We'll be in Zechariah and Malachi. Uh, We'll see you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.